Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. We get asked a lot of little questions about sodium hyaluronate and hyaluronic acid. And I had a little dig around on the internet and I found a lot of misinformation about this material as well. So I thought I'd provide a video for you summarizing the different sizes and types of hyaluronic acid and sodium hyaluronate to set the record straight and also help you with selection. Now one of the first things you probably already know about your hyaluronic acids and your sodium hyaluronate is they have varying molecular weights. This means varying sizes and it depends on what you want the substance to do as to which molecular weight or size you should be using in your formulations. At any size, it's still going to provide some benefit. It just depends exactly what benefits you want that will aid your selection process. First of all, there is very low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. The inky name of this material is generally hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid, and it is generally less than 50 kilodaltons in size. Now at this size, it can penetrate to the horny layer of the epidermis. So you read a lot out there about deeper penetration, and that's simply not correct. At this very small molecular weight, it can get to the horny layer, which is great for boosting viscoelastic properties of the skin, for boosting the internal hydration of the outer layers of the epidermis, and for reducing fine lines and wrinkles quite effectively. And it does this because of its humectant properties. By drawing water to it, it simply puffs out those wrinkles from the inside and gives a more smoother, supple look to the skin. It's even been shown at this molecular weight to provide these benefits for up to three days. Next is what we call low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Now it's important at this point to really emphasize that the type of material you're adding to your formulation is actually sodium hyaluronate. So the inky name would generally be sodium hyaluronate. Now your low molecular weight hyaluronic acids are anything from your 50 kilodaltons up to around 1000 kilodaltons. And even at this mid range, they are still fantastic additions to your formulation to boost suppleness of the skin, to smooth and condition the skin. And of course, they still provide fantastic hydration and reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles because of their humectant benefits. And of course, then we have the very high molecular weight hyaluronic acids. Again, the inky name of these materials is generally sodium hyaluronate. So again, that's how it would tend to be listed in your ingredients panel, but just check with the exact material provided by your supplier. Now, high molecular weight hyaluronic acid is considered to be 1000 kilodaltons or greater in size. And even when it's really large like this, it still provides some fantastic benefits to your personal care formulas. With this very high molecular weight, it can act like a polymer to produce a gel to your formula for a start. It can also provide a fantastic barrier for moisture protection. Now this is a breathable moisture protective barrier that boosts and that protects against trans epidermal water loss. Now you can also use a combination of the different molecular weight hyaluronic acids in your formulation. Just be careful of the inky name and how you present it on your label and in your marketing. You can definitely use some of your very low molecular weight hyaluronic acid for its anti-wrinkle benefits and suppleness effects and because it lasts up to three days as mentioned. And you can combine this with some of your larger molecular weight hyaluronic acids for their breathable moisture protective benefits that really protects against trans epidermal water loss. The combination of different molecular weight hyaluronic acids in your formula can of course give multiple benefits the best of which is a reduction in fine lines and wrinkles that is almost immediately obvious and that lasting moisture protective benefit. The question then is how much to use. Now generally for the moisture protective or suppleness benefits you would use 0.1 to 0.5% of the powder. As I mentioned, the very large molecular weight hyaluronic acids or sodium hyaluronate can actually form a gel in your product. And you'll see various videos where I use this benefit to great advantage. One of the things about using your sodium hyaluronate is it does introduce electrolytes to your formula. So you need to make sure that you stabilize your formula effectively as it can impact some of your polymers that are not electrolyte tolerant or resistant. You can also get your sodium hyaluronate or hyaluronic acid forms 
already mixed with water. Just be careful of what preservatives may be used. It may not comply with your company philosophy. If you're going to use a liquid form, you'll need to know the concentration, but generally you would use between 10 and 50% of a liquid form of sodium hyaluronate because it's diluted so significantly as part of that solution form. You can definitely use it as a powder and add it direct. It is very water soluble, but of course it will cost a lot more as a powder, but you then need a significantly lower input for the same type of results. It's really important with any of your hyaluronic acids or sodium hyaluronate that you do not heat it or expose it to heat at any time. It will degrade and no longer perform its benefits. Similarly, do not expose it to high shear. Sodium hyaluronate and hyaluronic acid is a polymer. So therefore, if you expose it to high shear, you will cut it into smaller fragments and it will lose its humectant benefits. So don't expose to high shear or heat when you're adding it to your formulation. Well, there you go. A bit of a summary about sodium hyaluronate and hyaluronic acid in your formulations. Just remember to check with the supplier about its molecular weight and size, and of course, the correct inky to be using on your label. But don't worry, it still has benefits at any size. And of course, you also need to factor in the cost when adding it into your formulation. Just remember, powders are so much more expensive because they are straight forms of the material and you simply don't need much. I hope you've enjoyed this summary on hyaluronic acid and can now make more confident selections for your formulations. Please give the video a thumbs up, please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!